Hey, it's Lucky. The boys got me a Razer Kishi. It's basically a controller for an Android phone. And I thought I'd build some prototypes with it, with Godot. I thought it would be perfect, as an Android phone is basically the lowest hardware your game is ever gonna run on. And the form factor is similar to controllers of consoles and the Switch. So if it works on here, it should work on anything. The first thing I built was this input demo, just to see if all the buttons are working. I wanted to make it a little more fun than just uh, text on screen though, so I made these 3D effects and the buttons going down. I think it looks quite neat. So I'll quickly build it to Android, just to see if it's working on the phone. Looking good. Alright. I'm gonna be building three prototypes for this device. The first one is gonna be a spaceship simulator. So first I'll need some space. I found this space skybox generator online. I'll link it in the description. It basically generates these awesome looking skyboxes for galaxies and star fields. So I grabbed one of these, converted it to a panoramic image because Godot doesn't really support cube maps for skyboxes. And the next thing I was going to need is a ship. I found this awesome ship, but the vertice count was quite high. I make that deal. How about you, you bitch? You make that deal? I make that deal. I don't blame you. Damn good deal. So I converted it to a model type that's compatible with Godot, imported it, added in some post processing effects, and built it for Android again just to see if this giant model could keep up on uh, Android specs. And, I mean, it looks great, right? For this demo, I wanted to make use of the analog triggers on the Kishi. Basically, the throttle is controlled with the right analog trigger and the left analog trigger controls the rotation speed of the ship for better maneuverability. Uh, I made it so when you pull the, the throttle all the way down, it loads up this warp and then after a second it just shoots out the plane with this nice effect. Uh, I added in some thruster effects, which you can see me doing now, and some sound. And I think that's our first prototype finished. For the second prototype, I thought we'd chill down a bit and I'd make a cozy game. I thought of this beach seashell collecting game, uh, but the process was anything but chill. Uh, I made the big mistake of not having great file organization in a multi-game project, so everything got messy so quick. And I thought I could add this water shader at the end of the project, but I just couldn't get it to work. Uh, I did add this decal effect for making the sand look wet when the waves retreat. Which kind of worked out, but in the end it just looks like flat plains of water and sand. And the shells kind of look out of place. So yeah, not a great success, but it's there for a little bit of relaxing vibes and I kind of like the sound. So, let me show you what that looks like. Thank you. 
Now I knew I had to make a strong comeback after this last game. Because, come on. So, let's leave the beaches behind and let's make something a little more impressive. One type of game I find always visually stands out are third person games. So that's where I started. I made my little demo stage, added in my third person character, set up the camera rig, a walking animation and a running animation. And build it to Android for testing. This is actually where I find my first Android related bug. Uh, the textures on this character are looking very weird, as you can see. I think it's something with the specular, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's easily fixable with setting a custom material for the character. I'll set the character to unshaded for now. If anybody knows what's going on with this, please let me know. I tried a couple things, but I couldn't figure it out. And it's a lot of time going back and forth between Android builds. Alright, I think I finally got an idea for this last game. A Souls-like game. You know, like Dark Souls. So I downloaded a rolling animation, a kicking animation. Then I built some basic logic for disabling control of the character when in an animation. And again, built it to Android to test it. Then finally, I made some logic for detecting if something is being kicked, and I made these boxes that you can kick out of existence. I really like this prototype. The controller feels so smooth, and the locked animations really make you commit to your moves. I think I want to make a bigger project with a Souls-like controller. I'll definitely keep this one in mind. So one last time I'll build it to Android, and this is our final product. Uh, I really regret doing this project in one project file, meaning all the games are just one Godot project. It really uh, messes with organization and overlapping file names and stuff, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. What I definitely would recommend is trying development for mobile. The new renderer in 4.0 for mobile is so powerful. The shadows and lighting are very beautiful. So definitely give it a shot. Setting up for Android is not as hard as you think. And just like with all videos on this channel, if you want to see how something is done or you want a tutorial, just let me know and I'll make one. I'll drop every resource I used and the APK for this project in the description. If you happen to have an Android phone with a controller or a Kishi, try it out. Let me know how the performance is on your device. So that will do it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed, thanks so much for watching, consider a subscription, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!